Hello, I'm Karen Ugo. Um, I'm the Health and Wellbeing Lead at Peterborough Environment City Trust. We're an independent charity that's based in Peterborough and works throughout the country. Um, for this project, which we call CHESS, um, Cambridgeshire Home Energy Support Services, we're working with Cambridgeshire Acre. And the funding that we've got to deliver this project has come from the Energy Redress Scheme. And um, why is there a need for this type of project? We see year on year people who are living with fuel poverty that are really struggling to keep their homes warm, to pay their bills. And this has a really um, severe impact on their physical and mental well-being. And, and in these times of COVID, we see instances of fuel poverty rising. We see people struggling to pay their bills even more. Um, people that have been furloughed maybe and have cut had their wages cut by 20%, people who've lost their jobs. Lots of people who've never really had a claiming footprint before need help that didn't um, previously, as well as all the people that um, needed help anyway. If somebody is unable to keep their home warm and they're worrying about their bills and their homes may be damp, it has a real impact on their health. It can lead to um, their blood thickening if they get really cold, which leads, causes strokes. Um, it can cause um, high blood pressure and so on, and real problems with people's mental health. The thing that's really different about this project is we're working with Cambridgeshire Acre to identify people in the local communities who are working with people that need help the most. And then they're able to refer people into us that need the help. So it's a real um, grassroots project um, that's able to throw a lifeline to people that really need it. We're expecting to see over the next month or so a massive increase in price rises um, in fuel. There's a cap of 20% that's going to be taken off at the end of March. And also, you know, there's, there's problems with people using more energy than they would because of the stay at home order. The project's active throughout North Cambridgeshire. Um, so if you know anyone to refer or you'd like us to come along and give you some training and give you some more information about what you can do and more information about how you can help with fuel poverty, please do get in touch. I've been asked to explain why I volunteered to support the work of CHESS in our local community. CHESS contacted me back in December 2020 with an offer of support for people on low income who were struggling with energy costs. That sounded like very good news to me. I work at Ely St Mary's Junior School, which is part of the DMAT Trust and our DMAT Trust values its local community highly, wanting the local schools to be a living part of that community so that we can contribute positively to supporting local needs. And across 2020, we had seen firsthand the hardships of lockdown and the impact on our families through the loss of income and loss of jobs. So when Chess came through with this offer of support at such a difficult time, it was obvious to us that we wanted to join in and volunteer. And the support that's available was very much needed. As a school across the year, we'd been issuing food bank vouchers at an increased rate. There's always a background level of need, but lockdown and job loss had pushed more families to signing up for universal credit. And with the gap between assessment and then when the payments start to come in, we were aware there was much of an increased need and Food Bank had been able to step in and help us with that. But we knew that where money is short for food, it was probably going to be the case that it would be difficult to meet the energy bills as well as we move to a difficult winter. So we were delighted to hear that Chess had got this funding available that they could make use of. How much of a need was there? Well, within the first three weeks after Christmas into the new term, I'd been able to make six direct referrals 
and I'd shared information to three or four more families within the community, there was a need. I've also been telling any friends that will ask um, locally uh, so that the news is spread more widely as well. Re making a referral is actually very easy to do. So after a conversation with the person that has the need, simply to get their consent, it takes only a few minutes, five or six minutes online to fill out a form. You give the essential contact details, a phone number and an email, and then just a paragraph of writing just to outline the need and identify what particular support the family would value. Would I recommend this to others? Absolutely, I would. And I mention chess to as many people that I meet through my work and also in the community as I can. Immediately, I was given the information about the training available back in December. I actually linked chess to the early help district team here in East Cambridgeshire, where one of the managers there has a network of people who have my role in various local schools. And so we shared the information out to other local schools, but also to the family workers within the district team because they're embedded and supporting many families locally across Cambridgeshire with children through the children's centres, but also the wider community. So yes, I very much recommend the work of Chess. My name is Bren Francis and I'm the Rural Development Manager for Ely Food Bank um, and I manage uh, Soham distribution and I also have um, a role in setting up rural outreach places around East Cambridgeshire. I decided to volunteer for the Chess Project because it um, works really well with the food bank. Um, one of our aims is to try and signpost people and give that message that we're not just about the food. Um, I wanted to, as part of my role, get a bit more involved with signposting and um, I wanted to increase my knowledge about fuel poverty as well. Um, because fuel poverty means different things to different people. And if I can um, talk to my food bank clients and talk about fuel poverty, then that's a good mix. So I would, um, I would really recommend that people sign up to this because it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter what, um, if you're in a specific volunteering role, um, whether you're with Food Bank or you're in some other community um, organisation. If you can um, pick up on the fact that somebody is struggling with their fuel, you know, and that it's, they don't know how to handle it or who to speak to, um, and the thought of picking up the phone to speak to uh, their supplier just adds a layer of stress. If you can take that away from somebody and make it easier for them, then you should definitely volunteer for this. If you're all about helping people, that's the message. It's Pearl Charalambos. I'm a social prescriber working at East Camp um, with St George's Medical Centre in Littleport and St Mary's Medical Centre at Ely. And today I would like to talk about how food bank and fuel poverty are both significant signs of new or existing economic impact on people's life from the perspective of being a social prescriber. So basically Maslow's hierarchy are used often as a model for how the basic human needs can be realized. For example, shelter, food, warmth, and all these are the very basic before we can even aim at higher aspirations. And these basic needs are relevant to a person's economic status. So some people may think that fuel poverty, poverty only happens in a third world country, but in reality, it exists right here in Britain. So why do I volunteer for CHESS project? Basically, I have come across people who really struggle with financial hardship in better time and let alone now, it is now exacerbated by the pandemic. So when I hear of chess, I thought this is a good source of referral for time like this. So how needed is this sort of project in the area where I work? 
basically fuel poverty can be quite a hidden subject. People don't just come to you and say that, hey, I need help. I can't pay my um, energy bill. Basically, until you really talk with people and find out their situation, and then you realize they can really benefit from a project like CHESS. So nine out of 10 people that I work with so far um, or refer into, or maybe thinking about referring into CHESS have accepted um, the offer for, for the service. So since um, December last year, when I first started with CHESS, and um, it's really easy to refer. You just fill in the, the referral form and then email it to the support worker. And would I recommend the role to other people? Oh yes, definitely. As a social prescriber, making referral is an intrinsic part of my role. Um, volunteering for chairs can be for anybody in any role, so long as it is a people oriented job. So what have we achieved in the first five months of this project? So far, we have recruited um, 57 frontline workers and volunteers who have signed up to be part of this project to help and support people. We've delivered over £8,000 of debt relief. Included in that number are five tanks of oil for families and two individuals have been provided with coal. It's really important that we've had the flexibility in this project to be able to provide the oil, the coal and the gas bottles um, that will help families. So many people across our county living in rural areas rely on these fuels in order to keep warm during the winter. But the majority of our support obviously has come through um, gas and electric debt. And it's really good that we're really able to help people, especially at this time when COVID is causing so many problems for families um, where they are very vulnerable to, to falling into debt at this time. So let's have a look at how we supported Mrs L in this case study. Mrs L was referred to us by her social prescriber. She has been struggling for some time with um, large utility debt, along with other personal problems. Mrs. L has been overwhelmed dealing with her personal and financial issues recently and came to us a, at a crucial point. We have been able to help her um, with advice and support in keeping generally in keeping warm this winter but also we've been able to support her by speaking to her utility company and helping her not only resolve her immediate debt issue, but also to help and support her in being able to manage her utility bills in the future. We've also put um, Mrs L in touch with the CAB so she can seek further financial advice and support so she doesn't find herself in this position again. Without her social prescriber referring Mrs L through to us, she would not have received the £500 debt relief we had to offer and the support and advice that we've been able to, to bring together for her. Our volunteers are absolutely key to this project. Without them, Mrs L would not have known about the support available and we wouldn't have been able to help her. Volunteering for this project is really easy and we hope it is something that you would consider doing.